Hey guys, today we're going to be checking out the Anacubic Photon M3 and in this video we're going to unbox it, set it up and do some prints. So I hope you enjoyed the video, let's get started. Alright, so the Anacubic Photon M3 is one of the latest printers from Anacubic and they do also have a larger format of the same kind which I think is called the M3 Max. So this is the box it comes in. You guys can see, you got a little picture here of what it looks like. Not too much more information anywhere else. The shipping label does say 20 pounds and as for most resin printers, the box is, you know, not too large. You guys can see my hand here, but yeah, let's go ahead and open this thing up. So I'm going to go ahead and try to open this one from the bottom. I've had better luck doing that. But it really doesn't matter. Okay, so on this one, maybe the bottom is the top. So yeah, I guess with this one, you want to probably open the top. So let's do that. And this is just for my own curiosity, guys. All right, so we got a plastic all around. Completely encased in soft foam, you guys can see. Take off the top layer here. We got our box, which includes everything like tools and all the accessories. And we'll go through this in a second. And actually guys, it's kind of funny, but this ended up being the bottom. So yeah, I got tricked again, but just kind of interesting how it happens. So let's flip it back around. So the printer is not too heavy. So more foam on the top, lots of foam all around the printer. And here you guys can see the cover, which is in this yellow. Let's see, I guess this is the front here. But yeah, actually quite large in size and definitely not small. For some reason I was thinking it was or would be smaller, but it's really a good size. So yeah, this is what the cover looks like built in this one piece. Very nice. We got an Acubic logo there in the front. And yeah, I love these kind of covers as they are aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, great design, kind of like a wedge. All right. So yeah, you guys can see how everything is packed. We got more things in here. All right, so this is the vat where the resin will go in. We got the build plate and definitely good size here, guys. And it is all metal. And also looks like, yeah, there's like some kind of coating there on the bottom. Very cool. It's kind of like a patterned, I guess, scratch surface. So, and also it's tapered on just two sides, which I like better than tapered on all sides because the resin just flows down better on this kind of design. All right. So here we can see the upper portion of the printer and I'm really liking what I'm seeing because the linear rail, very large and thick and we got a huge bearing. So we're gonna look at this up close in a little bit, but yeah, everything is very solid. All right. And that's it, it just all comes off here and the printer gets exposed and the outer casing is plastic but it has this really nice material like a texture unfortunately we do get a pretty small touch screen which is about 2.8 inches i guess but yeah it's absolutely tiny for today's standards and you can kind of see my finger so yeah wish it was a little bigger but i guess you know this is a more budget resin printer which you know they have to compromise somewhere but what they didn't compromise in is the large 4k monochrome screen for the printing which is you know quite important and this is one of the things that makes this printer also you know quite great is that it is 4k and it is monochrome which is fast printing you know they seem like they put all the materials in the right spot because we have very heavy duty z axes here and high quality parts where they need to be so i definitely love seeing that so let's go ahead and see what the bottom looks like so on the bottom we have just a metal plate with some venting the feet on this are plastic and they're part of the trim and I think that's made on purpose for it to slide around when it sits very easily so 
So that's what we got there. On this side, it's clean. On the other side here, we have an on and off switch and a USB port. And this is where we're gonna plug in our thumb drive to access the files. So going to the back, we can see we have some regulatory stickers, looks like maybe, and then the manufacturing sticker that shows us all the details about the printer. So it does operate on 12 volt DC voltage, as it does come with the power adapter. It weighs seven kilograms, pretty light, uses 55 watts. Machine size itself is 270 by 256 by 425 millimeters. And the UV light wavelength is four or five nanometers, which is the typical resin that you would use in any printer. And I guess I forgot to mention, this is where you plug in the power cord but looking here at the back we can see this channel here is clean and it's completely all metal aluminum piece and then we got the top portion which is just a plastic cover doesn't really do much just for aesthetics and then going to the front guys you can see the very large linear rail it's quite beefy we got a pretty normal elite screw and you guys can kind of see what the elite screw looks like compared to the rail yeah the rail is absolutely huge with a pretty humongous bearing so yeah, I love to see this kind of overkill on here because, you know, that's the most important part about resin printers is this moving up and down. So they got that really beefed up. And this part is all metal, brass bushing here. The knob is plastic, but it is a bolt. And our bed will slide in here. And here we have the screen. Let's go ahead and peel off this protector. And you guys can see how large that screen is. So the whole top here is metal, very nicely made. And overall, the printer feels really good. And what really stands out is the attention to detail to the places that need it. So let's go ahead and look at the vat. So it is made out of uh, metal, looks like aluminum maybe. It's got nice contours and even a pore spout here on one of the edges. Nice handles to grab onto. On the bottom we can see all the little bolts that stretch the film on. And these little white nubs here on each side are for lining up the bed onto the base. And there we can also see the max align where you don't want to overfill it above that. But yeah, the bed basically just goes right in here and there's little holes here that those things fall in. So it makes it really easy to align it up and it just goes right in. So let's go ahead and we're gonna look at what's inside this box here. And it will contain all of our accessories. So first things first, we have the power adapter and maybe you guys can see it is 12 volts, six amps. And it does work with any voltage from 100 to 240. The plug, or the cord I guess, that goes into the other side of the power adapter. Here we have two bolt knobs, and these actually go through the tub here on the top, and that's what holds it down. All right, we also get a spatula, and this spatula, guys, is only for use on the bill plate to scrape the models off. Do not use this in the printer in, on the tub, so it will mess it up. Now, they also do include this spatula, which is plastic, and this one you can use on the top to scrape off anything stuck to it. Let's say on a failed print or just, you know, whatever residue in there you want to scrape up or maybe even just move resin around. So yeah, you can use this plastic one. So we do get some gloves, blue ones, and these are just rubber gloves you put on to protect yourself from resin. We also get a few filters. It looks like about five of them. And these are to strain the resin. When you're done with the machine and you have leftover resin in the tub, you can pour it back into the bottle through this filter to save it. Now here we have a quality control card and some Allen wrenches and we will need those in a little bit. We also get one little mask here for you know protecting your lungs from breathing. The fumes and here we have a USB thumb drive that is what you're going to use to put your files on and then take them to the printer and print them out and it is in this red color. Also in the box we got some paperwork I guess assembly instructions here which seem to be pretty good but yeah it gives you the basics of how to kind of get started and level the bed which is not very hard to do. We're going to be doing that here in a second. So on this card here, they tell you to take off the top screen protector that we just did. That was just for, you know, protecting it. And on the back of that, they actually have instructions on how to install a screen protector that you can put on there to protect your screen. And here it is. And it comes with like a little kit, I guess, to do it. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to install it. I normally don't. You might want to install this if, you know, you're going to keep your printer for the long haul. And if you're nervous about spilling resin on the screen and messing it up and things like that. I mean, usually I never have have problems you know messing up the screen on the printer but you know they do include this screen protector if you want to protect it and for the last paper this is just a leveling paper which is nice that they include this we're definitely going to need this so yeah guys this is pretty much all the stuff that's included with the printer i'm going to go ahead and clean all this up we'll plug it in power it on and level the build platform all right so i plugged in the power adapter and you guys can see it has a little light that glows blue that's kind of nice and what's good about it it's very long it's actually about nine to ten feet 
heat. So, you know, you can be quite far away from your power source. So let's go ahead and plug it in here so it's in the back and plugs in. And if you guys remember, our power switch here is on the right side of the printer. We should be able to power it on. So let's go ahead and switch it on. And there we go. You can see the screen lights up. It says photon. And you guys probably can't see none of that because it's way too bright. See if I can adjust the camera here a little bit. So let's go through the menu here. So we got print system tools. So when you hit print, it's going to read that USB port there on the side. System is going to let us adjust our language, which looks like it's either Chinese or English. We got service where we can contact the company and information about the printer. Let's go back. Probably the most important one here is tools. Here we have some commands and also tests. So here on the move, we can move the Z axis up and down and also home it. And you can choose the increments there on the top. And then we got detection. So what detection is going to do is test the screen to make sure it's operating correctly. And we'll do that here in a second. And down here, we got a button called Z equals zero. So that's going to basically save the home. And we'll go through that in a second when we level the build platform. So to the right here, we have three more buttons. One of them is settings. And that gives us to adjust our UV power. So you could actually control that if you want to go less than 100%. So I'm going to leave it at 100. And then we got our sound control. So if we click that, now no matter what we click, it's not going to beep. So I'm going to leave that on, I guess. And that's pretty much it, guys. Then we have the back button here that goes back to the menu. So yeah, very simple and very easy to operate. So let's go back to move. And we're going to be clicking on this little home button after we installed the build plate. So on the build platform, you want to peel off this protective sheet. And maybe you guys can see a little better there, the pattern that's on here. So this is just scuffed up. It's not actually like deeply textured. It's more of a scuff. So you can basically not almost feel it. So it's very fine scuffing. So we'll remove the tub for now. And the build plate literally just slides right in here. We're going to tighten it with this knob. You're going to grab the large Allen wrench. And what you're going to do is you're going to loosen four bolts, two on each side. And what that's going to do, it's just going to completely cut it loose where it can move up and down a bit. So now we can grab our little leveling paper. We're going to put it underneath between the screen and the build plate. So let's go ahead and click that home button. And that's going to bring it up and then back down, looks like. Okay, so yeah, it did somewhat compress into the plate and it can still move around up and down. Hey, okay, once you got your paper under there, now what we need to do is lock it in in this position. But the best thing I found is that if you take your hand and kind of put pressure, but make sure you don't push too hard because you do have the screen under there. Just slight pressure and then we can tighten these bolts on the side. And you don't want to go crazy tight in there because we do have four pretty large bolt and just snug and that should be good there and the paper should move around in there but what I like to do is I like to go up 0.1 just a little bit and then here we can really see how good it is and it does seem to have pretty good drag on all the corners so yeah I'm pretty happy about this so on the screen what we want to do next is go back and then we're going to go click this set to zero. It just saves this current position of where it's at. So let's click on it. So it's going to ask us if we want to save it. We're going to click enter for yes. So it's saved and now it's going to raise the platform. Click enter. And there we go, guys. And that's how you level this build platform. Now, if you do start printing and you find it that, you know, you're maybe too low or like having elephant foot on the bottom of your prints, then you can just repeat this process with maybe a couple sheets of paper or something a little thicker. Pretty straightforward and not very hard to level this thing and pretty quick to get started here. So for the next part, let's go ahead and take the build plate off. We're going to go ahead and test our UV lights and the screen, make sure it's operating correctly. So we're going to click on detection. And here you guys can see we got three different patterns to choose from and it's going to run it for six seconds. Seconds. So I'm going to click on this first one here and next and it should draw a and there you go You guys can see it draws the pattern that's on the screen. So we'll go back we'll Go to the next pattern try that one out So this one's in the middle a box or I guess rectangle and you guys can see those matrix UV lights in there and the last one here actually is completely wide open. So that's a lot of UV light. All right, so yeah, this is how you test your screen and UV lights to make sure everything is operational. So yeah, everything looks good for this printer. And by the way, guys, I didn't mention, but these little nubs here are also great as little feet. You can see they kind of stick down a little past. So when you do set the tub down, it has little feet where the film doesn't touch the bottom, which is nice, you know, if you need to pull it out with resin in it. So yeah, a lot of good attention to detail here. So let's go ahead and lock in the build plate. 
or I guess I meant the tub, and the bill plate here goes on the top. Very nice, I like how large this knob is, easy to tighten. And that's it guys, I mean, we're pretty much ready to go. So for the next part, before we pour resin in here, let's go ahead and check out and see if we have anything on this thumb drive that was included with the printer. So it does plug in here on the side. And it actually does have a light that blinks. So let's click on print. And sure enough, we do have a test file in there. Let's see if we can see what it looks like. Okay, so yeah, once you click on it, you can see the preview there. And it does look like a specific file for this printer because it ends with the .pm3, I think. So here we have some functions on the side. We can either delete it or start it and then just go back here. So All right, so I'm going to move the Z-axis all the way up or somewhere higher. And I'm going to reposition you guys so we can see a little better. All right, so for the next part, we are ready to put some resin in there. And I'm going to be using this Anacubic water washable resin. So this kind of resin is actually a little less stinky or smelly. So it is still, you know, dangerous. You want to take the safety seriously. And that is make sure you have good airflow in the room. And also you do want to wear your gloves if you're going to come in contact with the resin. So since we're just pouring it in, we should not be touching any of it. Another thing to consider is you might want to wear a mask to, you know, limit the those particles getting in your lungs. So let's go ahead and shake this bottle up. So you want to shake it up pretty decently. Maybe not, you know, ultra violently, but just a really good shake because if this thing's been sitting around for a long time, you want to make sure all the polymers get mixed up really good. So, and also I noticed that if you use the brand of resin that's actually from the manufacturer, a lot of the times the prints do come out better because they do have their own formulas. And even though they're all very similar, they're quite different from, you know, manufacturer to manufacturer. All right. So this one here is foil sealed. So yeah, we're just gonna simply pour it in there. And depending on how much you're gonna print, you might wanna go, you know, as far as max, but I'm not gonna go that high. I'm just, probably that's plenty here. And also you wanna go ahead and once you're done, to close this thing up right away so it doesn't get contaminated or just, you know, start evaporating and things like that. So also I forgot to mention that we do have the gray here, which is great to see the details on the prints. So yeah, guys, at this point, we're pretty much ready to start printing. So we're gonna go here and click on print, choose the file, push play. And there it goes. So you guys saw that once the bill plate went in, it actually raised quite a bit. Yeah, just be careful not to overfill it. Definitely don't go past that max line or it's gonna be very close to the top. So, all right, so yeah, it started and we are on our first layer there. And we'll look at the screen here in a second, but pretty much we are printing. So the first, however many layers are going to be longer. And then once it gets past that, it's gonna be pretty quick. So now we can go ahead and put this cover on and this will minimize the smells coming out of the printer and also keep UV light from going in and you know messing with the resin so you definitely want to print with this thing on and also I noticed that this cover has a little lip here that it sits on so it really is pretty good fit and it kind of drops in where it needs to go so yeah again very nice attention to details and I really love the size of this printer and I don't think I've mentioned yet but we got a pretty good printing volume of 163 wide 102 deep and 180 millimeters tall so yeah quite a reasonable build volume for this printer. All right, so we are printing away and you can see this is our layer that we're on or the way it looks. And then down here we have the layer count, which is seven out of 1000. Here we have estimated time that it'll take to finish, which says three hours at this point. And also there's a percentage bar there and we're at zero still. So on the side we have settings, pause, and then cancel. So if you click on this little arrow here, it'll take you to more info. So we got the file name, the printing time, how long it's been, about five minutes since we started. Time remaining, two hours and 59 minutes. Remaining layers, 991. Required resin, so we need three milliliters, I guess it says. And then printing progress at zero. That's nice, it has more printing information there. So let's go ahead and click the settings button. So here we can adjust the bottom layers. So there's four bottom layers and they're gonna be exposing at 23 seconds per layer. And then all the layers after that are gonna be at two seconds per layer. And here we have the exposure offset, which is set to one. And these are all your controls. And to change that, all you gotta do is just click on it. Then you can change it here and then push the check mark to enter. We'll leave everything as it is. And that's pretty much it, guys. It's very simple and quite easy to navigate. Now, one thing I'm really curious about is the pause button because when you do hit the pause, you do want the 
the build plate to go up so you can see you know if your layers have stuck and everything is good so once it goes up a little bit more into the layers we're gonna hit that pause button and see if it'll raise up so we can see you know if our model has stuck to the build plate all right so we're on like layer 78 now so let's go ahead and take this lid off and test the pause feature so I'm gonna go ahead and click that and see what happens all right so I finished that layer and now it's going up looks like all right that's pretty good I mean we do have a very reasonable gap there Let's see if I can zoom you guys in maybe you guys can see we do have something under there that's stuck onto the build plate so yeah this is a great way to check if you know your print started and everything is good so I'm really happy that Anacubic put this feature in there because it is definitely quite useful especially for beginners you know that want to check make sure everything's good or even if you're changing resin or whatever the reasons are this is a very nice feature to have so yeah what we're gonna do now is just click play or resume and it's gonna go back to printing where it left off. All right, well that's cool. I'm gonna put this lid back on. And we're gonna continue printing this print. We'll see how our first one turns out. All right, so our first print is done, and here it says that it's finished, and it took three hours and nine minutes. All right, so let's go ahead and pull off the cover. And by the way, with the cover on, there was not much smells at all with this printer. And as I take it off here, I can definitely smell it. So yeah, the cover actually does a really good job keeping all the fumes in, and because of this lip, it kind of seals it off. So we can see our print there is printed and stuck to the plate. So I'm gonna move this sheet in here. Since this is water washable resin, I do have a little bucket of water here at this point you want to put on some gloves to protect yourself from resin getting on your skin so let's go ahead and take it off the printer so what I'm gonna do since we're gonna continue printing is I'm gonna just break this off of the bill plate and then we'll throw it in the water to wash it so let's go ahead and try this included spatula it's actually kind of big so hopefully we can get it off here pretty easily okay yeah so that was quite simple came right off so I'm gonna throw the model here in the water so I could start getting that resin off of whatever's not cured. And you guys maybe could tell the water turned hazy right away. So so making sure there's nothing on the build plate, we can go ahead and put it back for our next print job. But yeah, this thing should be pretty clean if we just kind of shake it around in the water. And yeah, this is the great thing about the water washables, guys, is it makes it very simple because you're not dealing with harsh chemicals like, you know, alcohol, which not the best thing to have, especially in a room. But yeah, simple as that. I got this little rag here for microfiber and we just kind of dab it a little bit to get a moisture off of it and this is what it looks like so I don't really see an elephant foot on the bottom which is a good sign and yeah as far as the layering I can see it somewhat but it does look pretty good overall so what you want to do once you clean it up is let it naturally dry don't put this in your curing machine with ultraviolet lights right away until it dries or even out in the sun you just want it to be somewhere in the shade but still lots of of light and it'll dry naturally and will look really good if you let it dry too fast it could crack it especially with the washables so yeah guys we printed our first print and everything looks great so for the next part let's go to the computer slice our own file and we'll see how that turns out all right guys so here we are at the computer I got the thumb drive plugged in let's go ahead and open it up so this is what we see inside looks like we have a couple folders and that test file that we printed and one of the folders looks like it's in Chinese yes and the other one is in English. So we have the manual in PDF form. Very nice. And here's all of our specs to the printer. We got some kind of photon workshop slicing PDF. I guess it kind of teaches you here or shows you how to use the slicer, which actually could be quite helpful for some people that are first getting started. The next file here is our photon workshop slicer for Windows, which is .exe. The next one over, Mac OS, which is what I'm using. Okay, so we got 32 and 64 Windows. So and Then there's a readme here, just a little note, I guess. So installing the workshop is pretty simple. It just automatically installs on the Mac. Let's go ahead and open it up. 
make it a little bigger here but yeah this is what it looks like so if you ever used any other resin slicer this is pretty familiar here but we're just going to go over the basics real quick so the first thing you want to do is you want to change your printer because here you guys can see on the build plate it says photon s so we're going to click down here on settings and here you have a choice of all the printers that are available and down here we can see an cubic photon m3 is what we got and it automatically you know puts in all of the parameters and we can see the file format is pm3 so so here you can adjust the, the resin type and the cost and things like that and the slice parameters so here you know this is going to be the default parameters so here you can adjust the layer thickness exposure time off times bottom exposure and then the bottom layers and then the anti-aliasing so anti-aliasing is going to help you have smoother corners i guess we'll leave it at one since that's where it's at and here we have surface abrasion not too sure exactly what that is maybe here we can find in the manual what that means all right so over here it says only one anti-aliasing value is one you can check this option to get a matte surface uh, okay well that's interesting maybe we should try that out but we'll leave it off for now so i guess it gives you more of a matte surface which could be a pretty good look maybe if i don't forget i'll print something later with this option in any case if you do make any changes you'll hit the save button here so yeah this is our build plate so let's go ahead and drag something in here i think eiffel tower will be perfect as we can print our full dimensions or at least in height so on the side here you have some hot buttons so this is going to move the model and you can also grab it and move it manually. Here we can rotate it in any direction or incrementally by the degrees. Here's our scale button. Here you can also scale. And they also have this fit to maximum. So let's go ahead and click that. And that's just gonna make the Eiffel Tower fill up the whole area or as much as it can go in whatever direction. So here it's gonna be the limiting factor for the Z axis, which is going up. But you, can, you guys can see we are filling up the plate pretty well. I think I off-centered this thing a bit. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So up here you got more options. These are more advanced, like hollow and fill, punching a hole. I guess you also have text options here to add text and also splitting the model up. Here you have some navigation around the model so you can kind of look at it from different sides. Now we're here to the right side, we have more options. When it's on this tab here, it's showing us our file so you can delete it. And you can also, you know, not select everything if you have multiples and delete whatever you want. But if we click on this tab here, this is our supports tab. So this is going to add supports to the model. So this takes a little bit of skill to learn how to, you know, make the correct supports. So we'll go back here. So once you're happy with everything, just click on the slice button down here and it's gonna ask where to slice. So it will take some time as it is pretty tall. It's got a lot of layers. All right, so once it's done, it's going to tell you the approximate time of printing, which is seven hours and 44 minutes and the amount of resin it will use. So you can either okay this and it'll clear out or click preview and it's gonna open another window that lets you preview all of the settings here and the layers. So you can kind of scroll through the layers or you can push play here so it'll automatically play them. But pretty straightforward and simple slicer to use. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our file that was generated by the slicer here, .pm3, and we're gonna throw it into the SD card or thumb drive. And if we go back here, we can see that it's right here. So now we can go to the printer and print this model out. And that's pretty much it, guys. So it's not too hard to use this thing. And hopefully this little quick overview was helpful. So I printed quite a few models and pretty excited to show you them. But before we do that, let's talk about cleaning really quick. So cleaning water washable resin is actually pretty simple. You can wash everything quite easily like in a sink or something or like a container of water somewhere. The best thing to do is have a wash and cure station, which will let you wash this pretty easily and also cure the bottles. But if you don't have one yet, you'd have to resort to just washing it with what you have. So pretty simple. We're just going to take the build plate off. And I got this little tray here, we'll set it in there. Now we do need to empty the resin back into the container. You obviously don't want to waste it. You want to put back the extra that you didn't use, but you don't want to just pour it in here the way it is. And what you're going to do is use a filter that'll catch any kind of particles or any, you know, contamination in the resin. So let me put this in the tray here. Yeah, the filters are usually not made for this kind of job here. So maybe having a funnel will also help. 
I'll go ahead and cut the tub loose. Probably a good idea to take these out. And we do have a pour spout on one corner, which we can pour. So I'm gonna have to hold it kind of in the air so it doesn't touch, because if it does, it's gonna leak everywhere, but yeah. Pour back the resin that we didn't use from the tub. And however much patience you got of holding this until it's pretty much all out. There we go. So yeah, I really like this spout here. It's pretty nice and it doesn't, you know, drip all over the place. We want to go ahead and close this right away. So I'm going to go and rinse these off, off camera, but this should, you know, be very simple. Just water washes it right off. All right, so everything is washed. Let's go ahead and wipe it off here a little bit. So yeah, again, guys, water washable resin is pretty awesome once you use it. And I'm really liking this one from Anacubic. It seems to work very well with this machine. And you guys will see that in a second here on the prints. But yeah, nice and clean. And just like that, guys, the machine is clean and ready for the next print session. All right, so these are all the prints that we printed on the Anacubic Photon M3. So overall, I was quite impressed with how simple and easy it was, and there was no issues whatsoever. So we'll start from this side and go that way. So the Eiffel Tower was the first print we printed, and yeah, it turned out really nice. So this is the full height of what the printer can print, which is 180 millimeters, and this kind of gives you an idea of what you can print. So but yeah, looking at it overall, it really really nice there's not much to really complain about so let's start here on the bottom so I was able to break it off the bed really easily and we didn't really have any damage or chips the legs look really nice and the detail is all there guys so I mean if you're expecting detail you know it's all there I mean it's phenomenal and there's no like sagging or anything weird so an excellent print even this railing here is really tiny and it turned out beautiful so now the inside rail there you guys can see it's a little warped but yeah it's not bad but it does have some warpage but overall excellent excellent print and if you guys can see this is actually a see-through here you can see it goes all the way let's see if I can get closer maybe to the very top look at that so yeah excellent precision and detail and then our very top there with those very fine little legs so yeah as far as precision it's there and you know you kind of do expect that from latest greatest 3d printers is you want to see that detail in the prints and the photon m3 here doesn't disappoint this was the first print we actually printed so i mean there's not too much to see here but yeah i mean this is something that you wouldn't be able to do very easily it demonstrates what resin printers are capable of so you guys can see we have this box and inside the box we have a lettering that says anacubic so yeah, very impressive overall. Great, great print quality. So speaking of detail, let's look at this elf girl print here. And I did not use any support, so we do have some unwanted, you know, sagging and whatnot else and uncompletion, kind of like where this hair is right here. It's supposed to extend, but I didn't do any kind of support, so it just kind of, you know, made it flat there. We don't pay attention to that, but just the detail on the print where it did print, I mean, it's phenomenal. It just looks pretty much perfect, I would say. I mean, this is as good as it gets. And the 4K definition of this printer really shows in prints like this where there's a ton of detail and it's all nice and crispy and just perfect, I guess. Now, if you look really, really close, you will see the layering, but I don't even know if it's showing up, honestly, guys. I mean, I can see it with my eye, but it's at certain angles in certain places, so. Yeah, I mean, we are still printing at 0.05, so, you know, we could go lower at, let's say, 0.025, and that's gonna give us even less layering, but it will take quite a bit longer to print, so. Now, another print I wanna show you, which actually, I did not wanna print it like this. It was kinda like a mistake I made. I didn't notice that I scaled it down when I was slicing the models, and I made this thing so miniature. It's supposed to be like a little test for resin printers. There's like a, all these different kind of things Things that it can print and I mean this thing is just tiny tiny and it tries really hard to bring all the detail out and you can kind of tell by these little tiny hairs here so the printer is capable of extreme detail and those little hairs there prove it as they're all there except for the last ones some of them are folded over so but those are just ultra tiny so yeah very impressive as far as detail goes so let's take a closer look at this rook here so this is just a basic print a lot of printers can print pretty easily yeah again excellent quality and nothing really to complain about just a really solid print and if you guys notice i was able to break these prints off most of them without any trouble at all now you're probably wondering why i have two frogs here and the reason for that is because on one of them i used the abrasion mode i guess is the one that we looked at at the slicer where it kind of makes a crinkle finish 
So let's go ahead and look at the normal one first so you guys can kind of see the detail there. So yeah, excellent print again. This is definitely a lot more simple for this printer, but you guys can see the reflection there. Very nice and even layers on this little froggy. And you can see the layering there on this one here. Yeah, even the smooth surfaces look excellent. Now if we add the abrasive mode or whatever it's called, the crinkle mode, and that's this one here. But yeah, you can kind of see there it's got this little pattern kind of textured finish on the uh, back there. So this could be really nice to clean up the print itself because it's, you know, not going to show the lines, layering lines as much or at all almost at this point. So yeah, the whole frog is in this crinkle mode. Let's see if I can put them together and you guys maybe will see. So this is the normal one here. It's kind of like more shiny. And then the crinkle is on the other side. So yeah, pretty cool. I actually like this matte kind of finish and I feel like the small sacrifice and detail can, you know, give you a much more aesthetically pleasing finish. So, so that's the frogs. So I do have two more prints that I printed with the textured finish I like this print here. See on there on the head there, maybe kind of hard to see, but yeah, this is a more kind of matte finish. So it just makes the print look more refined, I guess. And this is pretty fragile print and it's got like all of these little holes in the print itself. So yeah, the detail is astonishingly good. So, so here we have a pretty large millipede and this is also in the textured mode. So this one wasn't as easy to take off because all these little feet, they hold on to the bed. And as I was trying to pry it off, I did break a couple little feet here. Now I think I am a little closer to the bed that I need to be. So I think I do need to adjust a little bit higher the offset, but yeah, overall a great print. This is one of those where the all these links put together so and you can even print this you know on the resin printer which is really cool and it all holds together so yeah another great print a great finish and just cool what you can print so here we have the shark now with the shark it's a normal mode the tail for some reason kind of falls off let's see if i can yeah there it goes yeah i don't know exactly what happened here but in the process of breaking it loose i think i pulled the tail out and i kind of distorted the whole link there but in any case the tail could fall off I'm just gonna set it down so we don't lose it. But yeah, overall the shark also excellent print. Again, it's made out of these links and there's actually function in little pieces here, kind of like his hands, I guess. And yeah, this thing turned out really nice considering, you know, it is a link together. Now on the front here, there's teeth and we did have some trouble there and the mouth should open, but I didn't try it. Usually when I resin print this shark, it doesn't usually work, but let's go ahead and see if we can break the mouth loose. I guess. For some reason, I feel like this is gonna end badly, yeah. It's just melted together there on the bottom, I think. We can't really force resin or it just breaks. Oh wait, actually, hold on. We got some, oh, look at that. We got some movement there. All right, well, we were able to break it loose. We do have a little chips here and some missing teeth, but hey, we do have a functional mouth. Oh, would you look at that? Well, that's cool. So yeah, and that's the shark, guys. And if we look on top of his head, kind of see the finish there. Very nice finish. And you can kind of see the layering right on top there. Yeah, I'm really happy with how all the prints came out. Everything that you get with this printer is what you would want. I mean, it would have been nice to see a bigger LCD screen here, but you know, if you can get past that, the rest of the printer is just awesome. The overall build quality is great. You get a very decent printing volume of 163 by 102 by 180. I love this orange cap. Not only does it look good, but once you put it on, it seals it off and pretty much eliminates most of the smell. I absolutely love the beefed up Z-axis linear rail and the whole arm there with the build plate all being metal it's just a very solid high quality design and the tub being metal itself too so it all feels really high quality in the right places and obviously the best part is the 4k monochrome screen with the uv matrix light so yeah not to repeat myself too much but you get all the right stuff in the right places but with that said guys i think this printer is definitely a thumbs up so if you are interested i'm going to leave some links in the description check them out and if you guys did enjoy this video then hit that like button if you want to see more videos like this i got a lot more 3d printing stuff coming up so stay tuned also check out my 3d printing playlist that you'll probably find something interesting there so as always guys thanks for watching and i'll catch you on the next one peace